And welcome back to High School Physics Explained, and my name is Paul. And today I would like to talk about nuclear fusion. So what is nuclear fusion? Well, in essence, it is the production of energy by combining two smaller atoms into a larger atom. And we have a picture here of the sun, because that is where nuclear fusion takes place. But before we look at the dynamics of nuclear fusion, I want to remind you of this graph which I discuss in the video on binding energy per nucleon. And if you've already watched my video on fission, you will know that if we split the atom, we go from an atom that has a relatively high binding energy per nucleon, such as uranium over here, to smaller atoms that have even larger binding energy per nucleons, such as over here, and the difference is related to the mass defect. In other words, we lose mass by splitting an atom into two smaller components. And that mass is converted to energy, E equals mc squared. But we can also generate energy utilizing the same principle of mass defect by looking at the other end of the graph, which is where we're looking at today. And so at this end of the graph, if we have two lighter elements, such as hydrogen, and helium, if we join hydrogen up with itself, we end up increasing the binding energy per nucleon and thereby releasing a large amount of energy as that mass is converted to energy. And that's where is our focus. In its simplest case, the most common form of fusion often discussed is the fusion of hydrogen to form helium. And so here I have a simple equation to represent that. Two hydrogens convert to helium. And on simple basis, that makes sense. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, meaning it is made up of one proton. The second hydrogen, similarly. And if we look at helium, of course, we know its atomic number is two, two protons. But as you can see, it's a little bit more complex than that because helium nucleus is actually made up of two protons as well as two neutrons. So how does two protons convert to four nucleons, such as in this case? Well, we're going to discuss this at length and it involves a process called the proton-proton chain. So the first step to the proton-proton chain involves our single hydrogen atom and another hydrogen atom comes along and joins along with that. Almost immediately what happens is this. And so what we have here is a proton converting into a neutron. Now it doesn't just do that it releases a positron in the process, which carries away the positive charge, but it also releases a neutrino. In summary, we can write this like so. Here, I have my hydrogen atom and my hydrogen atom, and that converts to deuterium, which is basically hydrogen with a neutron, plus my positron and my neutrino. The thing is though, this positron doesn't last very long. And what happens is, is this positron encounters an ordinary electron. And as a result, that produces some energy and it produces two gamma photons. So there's the first step. The second step involves the deuterium or hydrogen with atomic mass of two. And now what we get is that in itself joins up with another hydrogen like so. And now what you end up getting is helium because we now have two protons and one neutron. In essence, what we end up getting is this reaction like so. And here's the first step as to why we generate a lot of energy. Because the binding energy of my hydrogen, remember hydrogen by itself, it's just single protein, so there is no binding energy per nucleon here. But in terms of the hydrogen 2, it's 2.2 mega electron volts. But the binding energy of helium 3 is 7.7 .7 mega electron volts. We have a significant increase in binding energy per nucleon. That means the mass on this side is less than the mass on this side. And so we've lost mass. And so we gain energy as that is converted to energy by E equals mc squared. 
So that's step two. Now look at step three. So here is my helium three and it combines now with another helium three like so. So here we are, have now a large nucleus that has one, two, three, four protons and two neutrons as the two heliums join together. But this doesn't last that very long. What happens is two of my hydrogens come off, leaving now my helium nucleus here. If you notice, I've got two protons and two neutrons and two hydrogens coming off as well. So in summary, we get this. Here is my helium-3 plus helium-3 becoming helium-4, but we also have the emission of two hydrogen atoms as well as some gamma radiation. But again, referring to the binding energy of a nucleon, we went from 7.7 .7 mega electron volts now to 28.3 mega electron volts. Again, we have now lost mass and that mass, of course, is converted to energy. So now let's put that together. So here are the two reactions we've so far discussed. My hydrogen joining up to form deuterium and my deuterium, deuterium to joining up with hydrogen. And what of course happens is that happens twice, like so. Of course, that ends up producing our helium-4. Now let's have a look at what we end up getting. If you look very carefully, we end up having one, two, three, doubled of course, so we end up having six hydrogens being utilized. We also end up using two electrons because we choose two positrons, but remember two positrons plus two electrons gives us some gamma radiation, so we end up using two electrons. On the other side of the equation, you'll notice I've ended up producing my four helium and of course my hydrogen that's left over here. Plus, of course, I've utilized two neutrinos. And if you include all the gamma photons here, as well as the gamma photons produced by the annihilation of the positron and the electron, we end up getting seven gamma photons. But of course, I've used six hydrogens and I end up getting two to return. So in summary, what we end up getting is this equation. Four hydrogens with two electrons ultimately gives me one helium nucleus plus two neutrinos and seven gamma photons as well as energy. And in this case, it's 4.3 by 10 to the negative 12 joules or 26.7 mega electron volts. Now, a little bit of this amount actually is utilized by my two neutrinos. And it's the reason why we do have neutrino emission from the sun. It's ultimately due to this reaction. So there you have it. That's the proton-proton chain that allows us to produce a single helium nucleus using four hydrogens in the process. However, life is a little bit more complicated. The chain that I just referred to is often referred to as the proton-proton one chain. And that is one chain, and it occurs about 65% of the time. There are two other versions. The first one is the proton-proton two chain, and the other one is the proton-proton three chain. I won't go into the details of the two chains. Needless to say that proton-proton two chain only occurs approximately 31% of the time in the sun, and in the terms of the proton proton 3 chain, it's less than 1% of the time. The one that we've discussed is the most common one. I won't go into the details of these, but we you can certainly look that up if you want to know a little bit more about the versions of the proton proton chain. I hope that has helped you understand the process of nuclear fusion via the proton proton chain. If you've enjoyed this video and you find it very useful, please consider supporting my channel. Even a small amount, such as a dollar, will continue to help me produce all the videos in physics. Please like, share and subscribe. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.